You can either work harder or take some time to sharpen your axe. You can either keep swinging or learn a better technique. And you ever seen all the people? They got that split wood. They know exactly where they hit it and it just separates. And you think it because they're stronger and they just know they, they get stronger. So, so when daddy do it, he just, he just stronger. They can, they can still hit it, he gets stronger than me. That's why I have it. I've learned that playing with us. It's not about you know, but it, 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 how strong you are. It's about where you hit the wood. It's about the technique that you use. It makes it easier. And they just play with us, have us do like this. We think we're strong. We think we're strong. And we just never just flip the wood. And they get behind us. You give me the axe real quick, young man. And they hit it one time and it separates. They know where they hit it. They learn technique. And they try to just go keep doing the same thing over and over and over and get different results. They say, no, let me learn the technique. Let me tell y'all something. There's technique to ministry. There's technique to what you're doing. Have you take our time to learn the technique of God wants us to make sure that we are trained. And this is why training is, 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 is skill is important. It makes you effective. Who wants to be effective inside of here? God wants to use you in a way that truly benefits the kingdom and meets the needs of those that you are assigned to. But it's not all about how hard you work. It's about how smart you work. Now, Zechariah 4 and 6 says, Then he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. To, to, to Zerubbabel. I said, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. You better get this. That sometimes we working by our might, working by our power, but we the spirit of God on us, a spirit of excellence on us. It's about how hard you work. It's about how the spirit that you have inside of you. It's about the technique that you have. It's not about might. It's not about power. It's about the spirit of it. And I'm going to preach something real quick. The Spirit of God, it comes to equip you to make you work smart. People be telling me, you know, I'm going to wait till the Lord do this. I'm going to give the Lord do this. I'm going to give to the pulpit and just wait till the Lord give me a word. But guess what? The Spirit told me to study the night before. <laughs> Y'all ain't heard me. Spirit told me to prepare. If you're going to sit there, if you're going to do whatever you're doing for God, let you never get the Spirit to make you prepare and get ready for what's on the horizon. Anybody can preach over you and say, Mother, I believe God right now. There's a call on your life. God will do some great things. And I believe God, you're going to be mighty and powerful. What do we think sometimes? Lord, thank God they call me out. I must be special. But we're not thinking in my mind. Lord, let me prepare myself. Because I know what I must do. It takes some preparation. It takes some technique. It takes some work. You expect more from me. We got to say, Lord, not by the might, not by the power, but give me your spirit of excellence. Oh, no, preach you, let them get out of here. The spirit of God does that. The skilled can do twice the work with half the effort. I learned that. If you know what you're doing, you can get twice as much done than we just don't, we don't know what you're doing. The skills make you look easy, don't they? I was watching Steph Curry just get the ball and just shoot. I said, it's not going in, and it goes in some kind of way. You know why? He begins to be skilled in what he does. He learns how to shoot it. He learns the techniques behind it, and he's skilled. So the moment comes, the opportunity comes, he'll make the shot because he's been skilled in what he's doing. They know what they're doing. Ministry was not meant to be hard. Whoa, preach this. God gave me this. I want to shout when he gave me this. He said, boy, ministry was not meant to be hard. Jesus equips those that he sins. And when y'all said, Pastor, nobody told me the road was going to be easy. But guess what the Bible says in Matthew 11 and 30? For my yoke and eat is easy and my burden is light. I've learned that when I do it my way, I'm putting my burden on me. I'm putting my yoke on me. But when I take off my yoke and put on his yoke, the burden is easy. The yoke is easy. The burden is light. I want to do it God's way. I want to be spirit to be working. I want to be skilled. Some of y'all didn't want to hear that. You like the hardship ministry. You like the hardship gospel. That I'm going to always suffer. I'm going to always go through. But God says, uh, my yoke is easy. Uh, and my burden is light. You putting stuff on your own self. You make those bills. You make those problems. You make those obstructions. But when you lay aside every weight and the sin, now you can run. 
trying to make me preach over there. But know what God said? Y'all go to the gym and I just give me this word. You know what God said? I'm gonna close with this one, y'all. That mastery in ministry spills over to mastery in industry. Put on the board, put this on the board. Mastery in ministry spills over to mastery in industry. If you have achieved mastery from God, there is nothing in this world that you can't do. See, I wonder why I'm confident that when I'm going to begin to preach it, I'm confident when I teach in my job, in my industry. I ain't scared of that. I'm scared of most scared of this. Y'all gonna hit me because I know if I can master this, ain't nothing in that world that I can't do. That's why I like to hear saints talk about. I'm so scared, Pastor. I can't do this. If I can go before the, before the throne of God and come out okay, if I can seek the face of God and be, be, be built by Him, be molded and shaped by Him, be smashed by Him, and put back on the on the God's wheel, there's nothing at my job, nothing in my community, nothing I'm going to face that I can't do. I don't like that kind of preaching, but I'm telling the truth. And then he said, well, Pastor, give me some scriptures. Let's go to my, 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 my character. Daniel and the three Hebrew boys were faithful and willing to the work will of God in spite of pressure. Because anybody can do God's will is okay. But they had some pressure, didn't they? They had some pressure. That wasn't enough to put them in a palace, though. Hear me? They were skinny and will. That was not enough to put them in a palace. In a palace. Daniel 1 and 17 says, as for these four children, God gave them knowledge. Ooh, yeah. He gave them skill and all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had an understanding in all visions and dreams. And because of this, them being willful to say, I won't eat the king's meat, was not going to put them in a cat in a palace, y'all. See, can I preach some say goes out here? You being saved ain't enough. Lord, take me to the corporate world. Give me the top spot. Lord, put my feet in a large room. Know what you're saying? You being saved in love? Because you can't speak, you can't speak in tongues your way to, to some good deals. Go in there speaking tongues in front of people up there at the, uh, at, the, at the bank and see if they're going to do something for you. They'll call the folks on you. And then you go going to call them and say, Pastor, I'll speak in tongues. They call the folks on me. The Bible says you should speak in tongues in front of an unbeliever anyway. Bible? Bible? So therefore, you were out, you were doing the, the wheel, but you had no skill. Right. Right. Yeah, y'all get mad at me, because y'all went, got these services, and turned around three times, and believed God, and went back to your job, and they still had you where you were at. <laughs> because you had wheel, but you had no skill. I'm going to preach this thing. So therefore, because of the, the reason why they went to the palace, because they had knowledge and skill and learning and their wisdom, they were placed in the service of the king. Now this scripture is very loaded. And in go to the next, this is it. And it matters of all wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them. Oh, he had to go call and get them. He found them ten times better. I'm ready to shout. Ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in his realm. And Daniel continued even until the first year of King Cyrus. Let me preach this. Because Christ that are skilled in ministry are exponentially skilled in industry. You better get ready to stand out and be put on elevated platforms. God wants his children to be ten times better than the children of the world. Oh, that's why the oil of this house has to flow to your house too. Don't you come inside here and get the oil in here, but not let it flow to your house. Not let it flow to your job. For wherever your feet shall try, it's gonna be your territory. Because you were skilled in here. Whatever you go, know, we gonna have skill there to go. Get this. Get this. God, God began to get me. We said, Daniel, you tell them people, I want y'all ten times better. Somebody say ten times better. Somebody say ten times better. Uh, I know you sent by somebody at the job got a better degree than you. They're doing better than you. They're smarter than you. But when the Holy Ghost gets on me, when I've been working for God, I've given my ways to God. He said, commit your ways to the Lord. And He gives you desire in your heart. He will establish your ways. I had to commit my ways first. And once I committed my ways, when I go into the job tomorrow, I will steal out there. I'll be 
filled in here. I want to be ten times better. Oh, you know why I want you ten times better? Because that's a witness. Somebody said that's a witness. You see, you see, when he elevates other people, they give that they don't say that God did it. But if I elevate you, <laughs> y'all believe me, if I elevate you, you're going to say, I thank God for this opportunity. I thank God that he put me here. It wasn't me. I just submitted myself to be skilled for God. And what I do is that the house will be close to this house. It's close to that house. The oil on this house should be flowing in Halliburton, flowing in Mississippi, flowing in the nation. Y'all got to say, Lord, I want to be skilled. If you don't mind, would you high five just three people and tell them I want to be still? Now, now, hear me. I want y'all read the last scripture. It says that, he says that Daniel continued even to the first year of the king Cyrus. And God says, I'm going to preserve you to outlast everybody around you. Y'all don't want to hear that one. You see, he started under Nebuchadnezzar. But God says, I preserved Daniel. Then when Nebuchadnezzar left, the next guy picked him up. Oh, y'all didn't hurt me. He didn't even know who Daniel was. But the next guy said, there's some oil on this man. There's some anointing on this man. I got to tell you something. When you are equipped with the skill of God, there will always be a need for you. They may not need everybody else, but they will always need you. Y'all hear this? about the shifting at the top. People get moved at the top all the time. But when you are skilled of God, there will always be a need for you. I need him here. I need him here. They can go ahead and go home. But I need you here. So you got a connection. You got a spirit that gets things done. They do it. But you do it with excellence. There will always be a need for the skill. And if they get rid of you, hear me, this is for somebody. I don't know who this is for. If they get rid of you, I'm going to give you exactly what God told me to say. Can you tell me what he said? I'm going to tell you what he told me. He said, if they get rid of you, it is only because you've learned enough to start your own. If they get rid of you, it's only because you've been there long enough, you've been in part of our house long enough that now God says, I want to give you the own. Y'all want to hear me? To be truly apostolic is to be fully equipped. Fully equipped. To be truly apostolic. Is to be fully equipped. Who will be fully equipped? Y'all know what we're tonight. I ain't gonna tell you to go find out who. But you know what? I do PowerPoints on purpose. I just write down a little stuff and do that. I do it on purpose. You know why? I want to be the best. I gotta go to my level that God has called me to. Don't matter, sometimes you got four, five, ten people. If I get about 20, I'm doing good on this night. It don't matter who show up. I'm gonna get my best. Because what I do here, a lot of times you reward me for that out there. Amen. Let me give y'all a testimony. My first old pastor, I didn't take a salary. I did not take a salary. You know, we, we had some stuff we had to pay, pay for it. Some stuff we had to buy. So I didn't take a salary. And, and you know, I, I, I did have to allow, he gave me a little, a, a love offering. That's a little, a love offering. Thank God for that. Amen. And, and you know what God said? He said, oh, what you give there, you ain't going to lose it. I'm going to tell you something. When I first thought, so I pastor, I'll make a certain amount of money. And I was telling somebody, I said, you know, when you make this out that amount of money, you think, the Lord is saying enough, but I'm going to make it work. Do you know, over those years that I gave it to God, I now make twice as much as I made then? Somebody said, yo. This is only eight years ago. Eight years ago, making twice what I made then. You know why? Because I gave it my best. I was skilled in it. I didn't just begin to just say, Lord, let me just, you know, sometimes we do it, don't we? 
we just swing the X. The X is dull. We got no technique. Then all of a sudden, God says, no, no, take some time. Sharpen the X. I get some time in my life and say, Lord, let me step back. What am I doing wrong? We can get so bullheaded and so stubborn sometimes that we just say, Lord, just keep on doing it, keep on doing it, keep on doing it, and we get no different results. And then we get mad at everybody, we get frustrated and ventures on. They ain't supporting me. People follow excellence. If you don't like, if you don't like what you're doing, who wants for you? Indiana Jones. Who's more foolish? The fool with the fool with politics. Right. But that's not what Indiana Jones went Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars. I don't know if we had a box set of both of those. So people ain't gonna follow somebody that's what they're doing. They follow excellence, don't they? That's right. This is why when we do uh, stuff on my syllabus, I gotta put my degrees up there. I gotta put my degrees because they say, you know, you've been trained. Now some of y'all, let me see how this got on everybody.